We're talking about the intimate knowledge of the Father and Jesus, and we're talking about transformation and the transitioning into that place. And so, um, the, the purpose of transition is to get me to be transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus. But also there are some mind thoughts and emotions that I may go through in this period of transition that I need to be at least aware of. And for some people, they go through a depression and a desperation before they enter into transition. Remember, we mentioned this with regards to the Apostle Paul. And so it is normal for a person to have this adjustment period where you're so paying attention to what you're going through, you're losing sight of where you're going, and you're losing sight of Jesus and the Father. So if you experience desperation or if you experience depression for a period of time before the transition, that's letting you know, okay, I need to redirect my focus to Jesus. Okay? Uh, also, for some people, anxiety precedes and accompanies transition. Okay? In other words, um, this is normal for some people naturally. But again, though this is the natural, normal experience for people, you can turn to the Father in Jesus and overcome depression, overcome desperation, overcome fear, and overcome anxiety. Now, naturally speaking, when you're in transition, um, naturally speaking, for people, they will feel uncertain. They will maybe even ha have some doubt or a sense of failure in the transition. Uh, but hope, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Um, hope is essential, critical, and central to a successful transition. Listen to me carefully. It's very important that you arrest self-doubt. Okay, let me share this with you because this will make you think. Jesus comes walking on the water, and Jesus is seen by Peter. And Peter says, Lord, if that's you, give me a word. Whatever Jesus says to you to do, do it. To come and walk. And Jesus gives him a word, and he walks on the word come, and he's actually in a miracle. He's walking on the water. When, when this man of God takes his attention off of Jesus and the word, he first begins looking at the storm, and then he looks at himself. Self-doubt will cause you to lose the miraculous, and he begins to sink. Then he takes his eyes off the storm, he takes his eyes off himself, he looks at Jesus, Jesus grabs him by the hand, and when he is focus on the presence and the person of Jesus, he walks on the water back into the ship. And so what I'm saying to you is when you are in transition, you need to keep your eyes on the word of the Lord, focus on the person and the presence of God, so that you can walk on the water and see the supernatural. Listen to me carefully. Um, what, what reason is to the natural man? Revelation is to the spiritual man. When you walk in reason, revelation is missing. When you walk in intellectualism, okay, revelation is absent. Logic and reason are the foundations of the impossible. Revelation and faith, being in the presence of God and staying focused on the Father and Jesus, erase the borders of the impossible. The revelation of Jesus in my life, my relationship with the Father, erases the borders of the impossible so that the impossible becomes possible. But I've got to eliminate self-doubt because self-doubt will get in the way of me accessing the revelation of the Father and putting into application the word of Jesus. So it's essential that I understand that if I, in the natural, have a fear of the future and a sense of dread, this will accompany naturally the process of transition, but I can overcome it by the revelation of the Word. Now, for some people, 
The challenge of transition will be they become tired in their mind, they become weary and exhausted mentally, emotionally, and physically. And this is not at all uncommon for people when they are experiencing the challenges of transition. Okay? And, but some people, here's what happens to them. They get stuck in trans, transition. And so the period of transition may last longer than you think it should, and some people get stuck in transition, particularly when they take their attention off the Word of God, the Father, and Jesus. And so some people actually get lost in transition, overwhelmed in transition, and they get detoured in transition. Okay, And some people, naturally speaking, become confused, baffled, and disoriented during transition. Why? Because they take their attention off of Jesus and the Father. Okay, So uh, it is common for people to have these experiences. Now here's, here's, here's what I want us to look at and examine for a minute. And uh, I need to, um, to, to find my note on this, and so if you'll just, just give me a second because I think it's so very, very important that um, we, get, we get a hold of this. Um, it's very interesting <laughs> um, to me uh, because one of the things that can happen to a person is um, they can, they can uh, because, of, because of transition, they can become weary. Uh, Galatians 6 and 9 says this, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not faint. The word weary here in the original language means to be tempted to give in, to quit, and give up, and because he or she is attacked uh, by evil through circumstances or persons. The word well here is the word kalos, and it means that you're doing good works, things that are useful for other people. It could be the sowing of financial seeds. It could be the doing of good deeds. The word doing there is where we get the word um, uh, poetry. It's, it's useful activity. It's creative doing. In other words, it's sowing financial seeds, not as a one-time act, but as a way of life. It's doing good deeds, not as a one-time act, but as a way of life. And uh, it's useful works. What's interesting is the word due season means that each financial seed, has its own season of harvest, and each good deed has its own season of harvest. Uh, due season is the word kairos. Kronos is chronological time. Kairos is a time uh, characterized by the activity of God. In other words, at some point, you're going to see God act in your behalf in response to your sowing of financial seeds and good deeds. Okay? Due season means that each financial seed, each good deed, has its own set time to mature for a harvest. They don't all harvest at the same time. It's a time determined by God himself. So there's a promise. You shall reap. See, now listen, listen. I, I'm going to reap from my financial good seeds, and I'm going to reap from my good deeds. And so it describes, it's a promise, it describes a future fixed event that is guaranteed to happen if we stay on course. If we shall reap, if we do not faint. So if means that our actions have the power to disrupt our harvest. Shall reap. Okay, so it means that if I get off course, I can lose the harvest. So the word faint means to loosen or relax. It re means a relaxed mental state. In other words, I quit doing what I'm doing. That results in a loss. So this is describing a person who's so weary that they give, they give up right before reaping the harvest that they work for. So here's what happens. I stay in the presence of God, right? And as I stay in the presence of God, I'm delivered from weariness. Let me prove this to you, okay? Because here's what you have. You have in Acts uh, 3, chapter 19, of chapter 3, verse 19 and following, it says, Repent, metanoia, change your mind, be converted, epistrapo, which means to turn around. So when I get weary, it's because of I'm thinking the wrong things. So I need to repent, 
I need to be converted. I need to make an about face because it's an action word. So first is, it's, 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 I, I change my mind and I change my behavior. It says, repent and be converted. Okay? Repent and be converted. Epistrapo. That times, kairos, of refreshing come from the presence. And so what happens is this. The presence of the Lord removes the weariness. And so I have to quit striving, quit struggling, and then I just need to settle myself in the presence of the Lord, and I get refreshed, I get renewed, I get revived, I get restored, I get delivered from weariness so that I can run into my harvest. My harvest is right up here. And so if I just continue walking with God, I will run right into my harvest. Some people, they quit moving, and so they miss their harvest. Allow me to say this to you. You will, um, you will have a successful conclusion to your transition if you stay focused on the word of the Father and the person of Jesus. Okay? Now, for some people, they run into dead ends when they're in transition. While they're trying to find the right direction, they become disoriented because they take their eyes off the Father and Jesus. But if you will give attention to the Father through the transition, if you'll stay focused on the Word of God, you will bring a successful conclusion to your transition, and you will bring glory to the Father. If you would like more information about Tony Kemp Ministries, visit our website, www.tonykemp.com and thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.